Okay, I should be live. Hopefully this is working. All right, I should be live. There might be a slight delay, but let's see. So I'm going to put in the comments, hello, and welcome to this live English lesson. Let's do it. <clears throat> and if you can see me and hear me, maybe you could let me know in the comments, and then we'll, we'll know that it's working well. All right, what do you think? Okay, so I should be live. Maybe I'll check. I see Majulin Hulali says, hello, teacher. I'll say hello, hello. All right. And I have music playing in the background. It's just light music. It sets the nice mood. If you can hear the music, let me know. I think the next song is starting now. But all right, let's do this. All right, so this is quotation illumination number three. Hmm. So let's take a look. What are we doing in this lesson? In this live English lesson? Well, we're going to analyze inspiring quotes from successful people. And look, we have three quotes today from three very successful people. The first one, uh, Coco Chanel, then Kelly Coutron, and Bill Gates. All right. So I did a little bit of research on Coco Chanel, and it's the Chanel. <laughs> we'll talk about it in a moment. <clears throat> but it's the Chanel that uh, is like super famous, and I'm not even into brand names and stuff. Okay, so let's jump in. I see the passenger is in the comments. Hello, hello. <clears throat> yes. All right, let's see if I'm live or not, huh? Take a look. All right, I'm just gonna check on my phone if I'm alive, if I'm going live or not. I should be. And if you could let me know in the comments, maybe save me some time. <laughs> Can you hear me and see me right now? Right. Look. I have my phone. Uh, Leahuda says hello. Hi, hi, hello. All right, let's see if I'm live. I'm Ooh, I am. Okay. All right, so I should be live. Wonderful. Okay, so let's get into the first quote. Here it is. All right. So this is the first quote, and it's by Coco Chanel. Mm -hmm. And the quote is, Success is most often achieved by those who don't know that failure is inevitable. So before we get into the quote, I think we have a time, a great opportunity for... Uh, Pronunciation. All right, so let's do pronunciation. Repeat out loud after me. Here we go. Success is most often achieved by those who don't know that failure is inevitable. Okay, so if you're doing pronunciation, let me know in the comments by putting some apples. And I'll show you what the apples look like for me. Uh, so I did the pronunciation, so that means I can put apples, right? All right, so I put apples in the comments because I did pronunciation. Now let's talk about this quote, all right? And how about first we'll see, we'll talk about the person, the lady who said this quote, all right? Here we go. So her name is Coco Chanel. And uh, I usually, I just search for the quote and then I find who said it later. And this is the same Coco Chanel that you see in, like, uh, the Chanel bags, right? I thought this was kind of interesting. So if you say the logo or bags... So you've probably heard of Chanel. Everybody in the world has heard of Chanel, right? I guess. And uh, she's the lady who was the founder of Chanel. All right, so let's read. Gabrielle Bonheur Coco Chanel was a French fashion designer. Nazi spy and businesswoman. The founder and namesake of the Chanel brand. She was credited in the post war and then it goes into extra stuff. But it sounds like she had a wild and interesting life. Mm hmm. All right, she was born August 19th, 1883, in Salmer, France. She died January 10th, 1971. 
Hotel Ritz, Paris. Ooh, not a bad place to die. In the Hotel Ritz? Mm hmm. In Paris, France, and her full name is Gabrielle Bonheur Chanel. Uh huh. So she is the person who said the quote. All right, wonderful. So let's take a look. It's success is most often achieved, so the people who actually get there and are successful are the people who don't know that failure is inevitable. Hmm. So, let's see, before I look it up in the dictionary and we'll look at synonyms and other ways to say it, can someone tell me what does the word inevitable mean? What does it mean? Inevitable. Right? What does it mean? What does the word inevitable mean? Right? I wonder if there's maybe a delay because I'm just seeing the apples now. But we'll see if anybody answers in a timely manner or else we'll go forward. What does the word inevitable mean? Hmm. Can someone either give me a different way to say inevitable or just what does the word mean? What do you think? All right, I'll wait a moment for people in the comments and see what they say. All right. Or we can go straight to the dictionary because I can try to explain it, but we could go straight to the Google dictionary and that might even be better. All right. Ah, see, Leah Huda says unavoidable. Uh huh, unavoidable. So, in other words, we could say it's going to happen. No matter what. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sally Yunus says, incapable of being avoided. I like that. All right, let's see. Uh, incapable of being avoided. So it it's like you're driving down a road and you're going to hit. You're going to do it no matter what. All right. Uh-huh. The passenger said, it's certain that it will happen. Yes. All right, uh, so inevitable means certain. It's like 100% certain. Okay, so the important part of this quote, I think, is at the end. By those who don't know that failure is inevitable. So I think what she's trying to get at here is that failure is inevitable and it's not necessarily a bad thing. When we fail at something, it Depending on how we react to it, it can make us stronger, right? It can make us even more successful in the future if we learn from it, if we use it as fuel to, make, to push us forward. All right, let's see. So let's take a look. We're going to look up inevitable in the dictionary because I imagine they have many more synonyms and stuff. So let's take a look. Let's put in inevitable. There it is. Let's hear their pronunciation. Inevitable. 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 All right. And here we go. Just like you guys said, certain to happen. Unavoidable. All right. Let's take a look at some similar words. Wow, there's quite a lot. Unavoidable. Inescapable. Bound to happen. Sure to happen. Let's see if I can move this over. There we go. Inexorable. Unpreventable. Assured. Certain. For sure, sure. And it keeps going. Ooh, preordained. That's a nice one. That's kind of a not so common one, but it means it will happen no matter what. It's already it's already been decided. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is inevitable. Okay, so people who don't know or people who understand that they will fail as they're moving towards their goals, wow, those are the people that will probably be most successful because they will use their failure to improve and to keep going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So I think this is a pretty good quote. Success is most often achieved by those who don't know that failure is inevitable. All right. So let's see. All right. Let's see. Oh, ah, you know what we didn't do? My mistake. We didn't describe the picture. That's behind the quote. I like to describe pictures because it's a great opportunity for vocabulary. So this picture right here that's behind me, kind of, <laughs> what do we see in this picture? 
If I just look at this picture, I can tell you how it makes me feel. It, it's, I see the light shining. It makes me feel very nice, very calm. Uh, yes. So let's see. If you guys can put in the comments, what do you see in this picture? How would you describe this picture? Hmm. We have different things. I don't want to give you the words. I want you guys to describe it for me. I'm going to take a look at the comments because I think it's a great opportunity to describe pictures, right? And I will guide you through. Let's see. All right. All right, Sally Yunus says sunshine, right? So we have sunshine. And then there's an extra word for the, the, the light that is kind of stretching. It's moving toward us. There's another word. What do you think? All right, Leah Huda says a wood. Uh -huh. I think the British say wood. In, uh, the Americans, I would say it's woods, forest maybe. Uh, so we have sunshine coming through the trees and there is a word for the light that kind of stretches. It starts with an R. There's the light that stretches and kind of almost comes down to touch us. What do we call that? It starts with an R. Hmm, it's a very short word. The Ariska Lid Lidwina Putri says a lot of trees. The passenger says in a forest the sun has shined and it is maybe early time of a sunny summer day. Uh-huh. Leah Huda says jungle. And I'm looking, I'm looking at the kind of trees and I see like pine trees over here on the left. So I don't think it's a jungle. This is probably, it could be a, a northern country, maybe even where I'm from, the U.S., northern part, maybe Canada even. Aha! Yes, Leah Huda says rays. We call them rays. The light that's kind of stretching through the trees. So the rays of sunshine. So if we go to a picture, if we look for <clears throat> rays of sunshine. Or let's see, there you go. So we have the rays of sunshine that are shining down, right? So you have the, the source of the light, which is the sun, but then you have the, the, the rays that are stretching out, right? Okay, so we can say rays. Rays of light, rays of sunshine, here we go. Uh -huh. So the rays of light, they're just stretching out. And it can be from, uh, it can be from the sun or just some sort of bright source that you can see it shining down. Mm -hmm. All right, so if we, uh, let's see, Sally Yuna says, I would like to describe it by this sentence. <clears throat> Do not give up. Your future is like the sun. It will shine one day. Sure. So when we're feeling down, when it's nighttime, it's dark, we can remind ourselves that it will be sun up soon. The sun will come out soon. Just like if when we're down and it's dark and we're working hard and it's frustrating, things aren't going right and we're like, ah, and if I had hair, I'd be pulling it out. <laughs> but we keep moving forward, right? And then things happen. Things will only happen if we keep moving forward. If we get stuck and we're like, ah, I can't do it and we stop, then we guarantee failure, right? But if we keep moving and use failure as something to boost us up, we can do it. All right, so this was the first quote. Success is most often achieved by those who don't know that failure is inevitable. All right, I like it. All right, so this front one is from Coco Chanel. All right, let's see. Uh, Garden says, <clears throat> blinding sunshine. Sure. If you look directly at the sunshine, it's like, whoa, it hits us right in the eye, huh? And we're kind of like, ah, I'm blinded. Let's see, Leah Huda says, the ground is like a green blanket or blanket of grass, right? And I think here, it looks kind of like grass, but I think it's something we would call moss, moss. So let's see, it's M-O-S-S, -S, moss in the forest. How about that? Okay, so moss is just kind of a green layer that goes over things. And if you touch it, it's just kind of soft and it peels up the, the moss that I've experienced before. But it's just green, right? And it's kind of like a carpet in a way. It's like a carpet over the floor, maybe over the logs, sometimes over the trees. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. 
So it's called Moss. Moss. M-O-S-S. Moss. Uh-huh. All right. So I'm going to move on to the next quote because it's great. Right. So let's see. Hmm. Should we start with the picture or should we start with the quote? I think we'll start with the picture and we'll do that. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> All right. Another lovely picture outside. All right, so I'm going to slow down. I, I don't want to give it away. Can you guys describe this picture to me? What are we seeing? It's similar but different than the last one. We don't have the, the rays of sun. We don't have the rays of light coming through the trees. But we're kind of in a similar location but different. Huh? Let's see. So let's see what's happening. Right, can you guys tell me about this picture? After we describe this picture, we'll go to the second quote by the other, another famous person, very famous and successful person. So let's take a look. I can tell you for sure it's autumn. We can also say fall. Ah, Sally Yunus says autumn, my favorite session. Ah, I think you mean season, season. Let's see, and I'm going to type that in there. I'm going to type in the comments, I'll say season, hmm. right? So a session is like a session, like a classroom ses ses session or a work session. But for autumn, fall, winter, we say season, right? Uh huh. All right, Leah, Leah Huda says it is fall and we see a walking path, right? And I think this could somewhere between a path and a road. It might be wide enough that we could put a car down it. And plus, it's kind of... Uh, what would we call it? It's well maintained. They've maintained this road pretty well. It doesn't have leaves on it, doesn't have branches on it, and it looks like they probably brought dirt or gravel in to cover the road. And when I say gravel, I'm talking about probably a mix of dirt and rocks, right? So here you go. This is gravel. And you put it, they put it on the road when it's a dirt road so that it lasts longer, right? And if the rain comes, it doesn't wash it all away. It holds it in place. Uh huh. So if you see a gravel road, oops, I spelled it wrong. There you go. So this is a gravel road. It's a mix between dirt, probably sand and stones, little pebbles. And with the rocks in there, it lasts longer. All right. So it's a good engineering choice, I guess. All right. Let's see, the passenger says a footpath was between ginger and yellow trees. Ginger, uh-huh, the color red, uh, sure. So the leaves have already turned. I would say this is very late in fall, maybe late in autumn, because the leaves are already turned. You don't see hardly any green leaves at all. So soon the leaves will start to fall. They'll start to drop off and keep falling on the ground like they are, some of them already have. Okay. Here we go. And I think there's a slight hill, a decline. So I think if you put a ball down on the ground, it would probably roll down the hill. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do the quote. Here we go. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to take a drink first. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look at this quote. First, let's do pronunciation and then We'll do vocabulary and the phrases, all right? So repeat out loud after me. If you're doing pronunciation, put some apples in the comments. I will put apples as soon as I pronounce it. So repeat out loud after me. Here we go. Your dreams are ball busters. They're not the yellow brick road. Okay, so I put my apples in the comments. If you're doing pronunciation, show me some apples. It's a good way to let me know that you're participating, right? Because I can't hear you, but I can see your apples. All right. <clears throat> so we have a nice opportunity here to talk about the quote. I think it's interesting to talk about who actually said the quote, right? So we have Kelly Coutrone. Maybe it's Coutrone. I'm not quite sure, but Kelly Coutrone. Let's take a look at who she is. All right, so we have some pictures of here. It's nice to put a face with the name. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. So, her title or her position or her job or her work occupation, she is an American publicist. All right. Before we go further, let's stick publicist into the dictionary. All right? A good word to know, publicist. All right. So a publicist, let's hear their pronunciation. Publicist. 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 Okay. So a publicist, a publicist is a person responsible for publicizing a product, person, or company. All right. So they kind of use the word again, publicizing, which is a verb, but we can look it up as well. Let's take a look. Publicize. So publicist is the person who does it. Publicize is the action, and it means to make something widely known. So you want everybody to know about it, right? If you're a celebrity or you have a new movie coming out, you want to publicize it. You want everyone to know. So you hire a publicist. Uh huh. All right. So the first definition was a person responsible for publicizing a product person or company. That's the first definition. Later, the number two definition is a journalist, especially one concerned with current affairs. All right, so current affairs are things that are currently happening, actually in the present happening with the government, with maybe even celebrities, world politics, wars, all that stuff. Uh-huh. All right. Okay, so this is a publicist and Kelly Coutron is an American publicist. Okay, and she's still alive. Let's see, so Kelly Coutron is an American publicist, television personality, and author. So this is from Wikipedia. She was born November 13th, 1965. She's 40, 54 years old, uh, born in Camillus, New York, United States. And her spouse, her husband, is Ronnie Coutron. They've been married. Oh, they're no longer married. Looks like they separated in 1993 after seven years. Okay. We don't know the details. We don't need the drama. <laughs> okay. When it says television personality, when I hear that, it's like, to me, it seems very broad. Television personality. It's like anyone who goes on television and has a personality, I guess. I mean, it could be someone they're interviewing. It could be a, an expert on something, but someone who maybe frequently goes on television and gives their opinion on things. Television personality. Well, that's nice. You probably get paid good money. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go back to the quote and let's take a look at it. I put some words and phrases in green. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> this one is quite informal, but let's see what does, what are ball busters? So we have the semicolon, so it divides the, the quote into two parts, one and two. It says, your dreams are ball busters. All right, so the ball busters, what are ball busters? What do you think? How can we explain what are ball busters? Hmm. And it's very specific here. Your dreams are ball busters. They're not the yellow brick road. We'll get to the yellow brick road in a moment, but what does the word ball busters mean? Because we can use the context, we can use the, the quotation, and kind of get an idea for what it means. So it's not the yellow brick road, so it's the opposite of the yellow brick road. What do you think? Sali Yunus says, a person who is relentlessly aggressive. Ooh, that sounds like something from the dictionary. I like it. Good. Use your resources. So, right, your dreams are ball busters, things that are really going to push you. Because if we have dreams, it's probably not a dream like I want to go brush my teeth. No, that's important, but it's not like a dream. A dream is like I want to conquer. I want to achieve this. I want to make this much money. I want to be able to travel wherever I want. So dreams are things which seem out of reach but we head in that direction step by step and we make them part of our goals. All right, so ball busters, 
are things that are difficult. All right. Things, it can be people or people or situations that are very difficult and make us work hard. I'm going to put that in, in capital letters. All right. If it's a ball buster, it's making you bust your ass. <laughs> That's probably a good phrase to learn. Uh, to, whoop, to bust your ass. <laughs> Informal, yes, ass is a swear word. It's not a really strong one, but it's, it's good to know. It means to work very hard, right? You work like crazy. Ooh, we'll put that. To work like crazy. All right, you put in the time. You're there. You're focused. You don't waste time. Ah, you're just, yes, you're moving forward. And it's not easy. Because to bust, if you look up to bust, if it's a, an action, it's to, it's kind of like to dis destroy something, to bust something, to break something. But in this phrase, you're not breaking yourself, <laughs> hopefully. You're just doing really hard work. You're hopefully working smart, but you're just working so hard. You're busting your ass. Uh-huh. So if we, let's, that's just a good phrase. So we'll, we'll make a sentence. Here's an example. Uh, Henry is busting his ass <laughs> because he wants to... Uh, be promoted to manager. How about that? All right. So Henry is busting his ass. He's working like crazy. He's working hard. He comes in early. He leaves late. He takes a very short lunch. He's focused, focused, focused because he has a goal. Maybe he has a dream. He wants to be promoted to manager. Mm hmm. Excuse me. Okay, so your dreams are ball busters. If we have dreams that are very difficult and way out there, we're going to have to work very hard to achieve them. If they were easy to achieve, we wouldn't call them dreams. We would call them, I don't know, actions, things that we can do. So let's take a look. Let's see what Google says when we put in ball buster. All right, let's see. Ball buster. All right. Informal. Let's hear their pronunciation. Ball breaker. Oh, wait. They put in ball breaker, but I said ball buster. Hmm. Oh, there you go. It's related. Ball buster. Okay. So ball breaker, ball buster. Either way, something <laughs> is getting broken, it sounds like. So it's a t if it's a person, a tough disciplinarian or taskmaster. To be one of the world's best chefs, you have to be a ball breaker or you have to be a ball buster. All right. It can also be a dominating or threatening woman who destroys a man's self-confidence. <laughs> okay. Interesting. I have heard that before, though. She's a real ball buster. <laughs> oh, interesting. That's not, I don't think, what they mean in the in the quote, but it's similar, right? It's something or someone who is really riding you hard, making you work to achieve something. Very demanding, all right? Oh, when I think of Gordon Ramsay, you've probably heard of Gordon Ramsay, right? I would think of him as a ball buster or a ball breaker because he demands he has such high expectations he demands top quality work from everyone right and this is probably why he's so freaking successful he has a quality standard which is like way up here well everybody else is kind of here and he's like nope you better get up to my level i'm gonna swear at you i'm gonna yell at you <laughs> i'm gonna go crazy right so i would say gordon ramsay is a good example of a ball buster person who has a very dominating way about them, very demanding, very aggressive, and they know what they want and they do it, right? So yeah, Gordon Ramsay. Mm -hmm. Incredible guy, incredible chef, incredible businessman, very hard worker. All right, so here we go. The first part, your dreams are ball busters. So in other words, things that you want to achieve in life, 
if they're up there, they're going to make you bust your ass. <laughs> they're going to make you work to work very hard. They're going to make you work like crazy be or else they wouldn't be dreams, right? And if it's something you actually want to achieve, then you'll actually do the work. All right. So let's take a look at the second part of this quote. They're not the yellow brick road, right? So when they say they, there, we're talking about the dreams. They're not the yellow brick road. All right. So I'm going to type it over here. Can someone tell me what does it mean, the yellow brick road? Because it, it refers to something, something very, very famous. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Aliyah Huda says the chef. Aliyah Huda said he is straightforward. Yes, Gordon Ramsay, very straightforward. Boom. This is how it is. This is how it's going to be. Let's see. Sally Yunus says, I have to be a ball buster. Ha ha ha. If I want to be rich. Yes, I think so. Doesn't mean you have to be unkind or try to destroy people, but uh, I guess sometimes maybe you'll be need to be unkind to people that are unkind to you and try to distract you from your goals. But if you're a ball buster, you need to be kicking butt, right? All right, let's see. Leah Huda says brick means block. Okay, when we think about, sure, you could say like a block of concrete. It's similar. Let's take a look. We put it in a brick. Right? So this is a brick. They use it to make houses. They, right. So if you say a brick house. Whoops, I got to spell it right. So this is a brick house. Okay. So we're talking about the yellow brick road. Now this, in American culture, and I think it was pretty worldwide success. All right. Garden says easy to walk. Yes. That is the meaning of the yellow brick road. All right. So that's the meaning. Something that's easy to do, right? Something that's easy to do and well defined. As in, it's easy and it tells us how we need to achieve it. All right? So, I'm going to quick put this in. The Yellow Brick Road is actually a reference to a movie. A very, very famous movie in the US. And I, it's, it's old, but if you guys ever heard of The Wizard of Oz. It's a movie. All right, so let's see. We'll put in Wizard of Oz and let's go take some, let's look at the pictures. Okay, so this is the Wizard of Oz and uh, it originally came out in black and white. It's a pretty old movie, but it, it was very successful. Most kids know about it. It's very, very common and very uh, successful story. All right, so the Wizard of Oz Part of the story is they have a journey. They're on a journey and they have to always follow the yellow brick road. So I'll put in yellow. Whoop. There it is. Yellow brick road. All right. So throughout the movie, through the whole movie, there's this yellow brick road. Wherever they are, as, as long as they don't go too far off, they can see this yellow brick road and they always follow it through the whole movie <laughs> because they're trying to get to this uh, I think it's called the Emerald City and there's some magic magician guy there who's supposed to fix things and make them better and uh, yeah so they always go through the yellow brick road and I think the quote is talking about this because in the movie when they go they follow the yellow brick road they already know where they're going they just have to get there, right? So they know they don't have to turn right. They don't have to turn left. They always follow the yellow brick road. And I think what Kelly Coutron is trying to say is that it's not that easy. <laughs> Life is not that easy. So you don't just wake up one morning and see a yellow road and be like, ah, oh, I need to walk down there. No. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe we'll put undecided. All right, so this is probably more like <laughs> more like reality, right? Because we have to figure it out. Now, once we get more advanced and hopefully more mature, I think it gets easier, right? We know what we want and it's less easy to be distracted and stuff. But life isn't just so easy that you just walk straight forward and everything's like, ha, ah, hooray, wonderful. Life is difficult. 
right? We have to make choices. We have to take action. We have to do things which are not easy, all right? So your dreams are ball busters. Your dreams are difficult. They're not the yellow brick road. They're not easy. They're not already defined for you. It's not just going to lay out in front of you and you just walk down the road. It's not that easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And see, Leah Huda says, nothing is easy. You have to fight to accomplish what you want. Sure. You have to do it. You have to take action. All right. Okay. So, this was the quote. This is quote number two. All right. It's from Kelly Cutrone. Your dreams are ball busters. They're not the yellow brick road. So, in other words, things that you want to accomplish that will really change your life and raise you up to a higher level, it's going to be difficult. All right. And I think this one mixes well with the first quote because our dreams are difficult and we're going to fail along the way. We're going to make mistakes. Things will go wrong. It will be terrible. But if we can keep going, we keep going even though we fail at that moment. Because there, there's this, another saying, it's that uh, it's either you... Ah, you win or you... Uh, actually, it's on the side of my bottle. One sec. <laughs> Let's see. So I have another water bottle. And it says, either you win or you learn. Ooh, I like that. So that's another quote. And I don't know who said it. But here it is. I'll type it. Either you win or you learn. Aha! Uh -huh. Words of wisdom from I don't know who, from my water bottle. Either you win or you learn. Hmm. So if you win, great! Things went very well. You achieved something. You did it. Fabulous! Okay? If you don't win, we're always talking about failure. Ah! But actually, it's an, uh, an awesome learning opportunity. If we're willing to see it as that, right? If we have more of a good attitude, we're willing to look for opportunity, then it's a learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's move to the number three. And we'll start with the picture, the background picture. Right? Right. Similar, but a little bit different, right? So all three pictures so far have been similar, but they're a bit different. So can you guys tell me... Tell me about this picture and how it's different from the other two. Or just describe something about this picture. What do you see? Let me take a drink. Mm -hmm. I talk so much, I need to drink my water. Alright, so one thing that's similar in this picture to our first one is that we have the sun and we have sun rays rays of light from the sun that are kind of stretching out, right? Kind of stretching out and reaching towards us. All right. So what season do you think it is in this picture? I don't think it's, it's not summer. It's definitely not spring, right? Leah Huda says here we see a few trees. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We see a few trees and they're not very close together. They're kind of spread out. And how do we describe, I'm trying not to give the answer, how do we describe the trees <laughs> that they don't have things on them? <laughs> how would we describe that? I don't want to use the word. Hmm. All right. Leah Huda says it is like sunset. Yes, sure. Looks like sunset. Maybe the sun is setting. Possibly it could be sunrise too. I don't know, depending which direction we're facing. Garden says winter. Yes, I think it is winter. And one way we can tell is that almost all of the leaves have fallen off. Now, remember in winter, some of the leaves stay on, but they're, they're dead, right? But somehow they didn't fall off in the wind and all that. So sometimes some of them stay on, but they're brown and they're dried up and they crack and they're old. All right, so Sally Yunus says, I see the sun goes down and the trees don't have leaf. They don't have leaves. Uh huh. As I see it, describe for someone who gave up. Ooh, maybe, maybe. So maybe this picture is not as inspiring 
as the first one with the sun coming up. I don't know, when I look at this picture, I still feel pretty peaceful. I think it makes me feel like it's cold outside. I'd probably have to wear a coat and a hat and some gloves, but uh, I would say it's peaceful. It's probably very quiet in the woods here. Huh? Leah Huda says, bare trees. Yes, the trees are leafless. They're bare. There's no, tr there no leaves, uh, no vegetation on them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's like a cold winter day. It could be early winter because there's no snow or hardly any snow. Yeah, okay. So let's do the quote and we're going to take a look. Okay, here we go. Related quote. Let's start with pronunciation. So repeat after me out loud. And if we're doing it, we'll put the apples in the comments. And then we'll talk about this famous guy here. All right, here we go. Repeat out loud. Success is a lousy teacher. It seduces smart people into thinking they can't lose. Okay, so the famous person who said this quote is Bill Gates. And I imagine most people have heard of Bill Gates. He seems to be pretty much, for the last few years, the richest guy in the world. Or he, he becomes number two, and then he's back on number one again. So I don't know, right? So Bill Gates, let's take a look, quick look at Bill Gates. All right, so it's good to put a face with the name. So you hear the name and you can see what the person looks like. All right, so he is an American business magnate. Hmm. So let's look up that word. That's a good word to look up. All right, we'll look it up. Magnate. Okay, so magnate. 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 It kind of looks like magnet, but magnet is very different. This is like a magnet, right? So you have like something that's metal and zook, it sticks to it. Magnet. That's magnet, but we're going to be talking about... Magnate. Magnate. All right, say it again. Magnate. Magnate. Okay, so a magnate is a wealthy and influential person, especially in business. Mm. For example, a media magnate. Okay, all right, let's take a look at some synonyms. They won't be exactly the same, but they give us a similar idea, especially the first ones. Industrialist, tycoon, mogul, captain of industry, baron, lord, king. Ooh, king, right? You're on the top. You have all the money. Proprietor, entrepreneur, merchant prince, financier. Mm -hmm. All right. So, magnate, someone who's got a lot of freaking money and a lot of influence, and they've probably worked like crazy. They're, prob they're probably a ball buster. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look. All right, let's read about him. William Henry Gates III. So if you see two, the 111 Roman noodles, Roman noodles, Roman numerals, I, 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 that just means three, and we would say it, pronounce it as the third. William Henry Gates III is an American business magnate, software developer, developer investor, and philanthropist. He is best known as the co-founder of Microsoft Corporation. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the word philanthropist. That's a good one to look up. Philanthropist. There it is. All right. And let's check, check out their pronunciation. See if I'm saying it right. Philanthropist. One more time. Philanthropist. Philanthropist. Okay. So it is a person who seeks to promote the welfare of others especially by the generous donation of money to good causes. Right. Now, Bill Gates gives a lot of money away. Right? So, one thing I find interesting, it's quite common that people will complain about rich people. You know, they're greedy, they're mean, they're taking all the money, they control the people, blah, blah, blah. Okay? But, guess who gives the most money? I mean, not like a little money, millions billions of dollars each year. 
the rich give like crazy. And it's like we choose, not, we choose to ignore that and we just focus on things that make us upset. But the, the rich give money away like crazy. They have uh, their, uh, their charities, their organizations, they help out in the world. Wow. I mean, Bill Gates and his wife, I think they have something called the Gates Foundation, Bill and Melinda Gates. And they give money away. They invest in infrastructure. They fix things. They develop things. They do a lot of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is Bill Gates, born October 28th, 1955. He's 64 years old or age 64 years. I guess he was born in Seattle, Washington, United States. Mm -hmm. His net worth as of October 2019, U.S. dollars, $105.5 billion. I can't even, it's difficult to wrap my mind around <laughs> that much money, right? It's like, I understand the number, but what? You know, what does that mean? It's just so much money. I mean, if it was like 105.5 million, I would still be like, wow, right? <laughs> this one's billion. So I say, way to go. When the these rich people, in the past, I used to kind of feel jealous. It's like, oh man, you know, and then you kind of try to find fault with people. Oh, but he has a problem and this is wrong. And I'm learning that I become a better person when I celebrate other people's success. So someone just kicks butt at something, they do incredibly, they have incredible success at something. I find it much better if I try to share in their feeling. Way to go, fabulous, wonderful. Because if I get jealous and I get sunk down, then it drags me down and I don't make much progress on my own goals, right? But if you see someone who's just kicking butt, such great inspiration. Wow, they did it. They did it. If they can do it, then why can't I do it? Why can't I do something amazing? So I think we can use successful people, incredibly successful and rich people, as motivation, as fuel to make us work even harder. All right. All right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. Let's do the quote. Let's talk about it. So first part, success is a lousy teacher. All right, I made this word green, lousy. Hmm, what does the word lousy mean? So we're describing a lousy teacher. And it could be, if it's a different situation, it could be a lousy friend, it could be a lousy product, it could be a lousy car, a lousy bottle, it could be some lousy landlord. <laughs> Can someone tell me, what does the word lousy mean what do you think lousy hmm. good time for me to take a drink all right i'm looking in the comments you guys tell me aha sally Yunus says extremely poor or bad i like it yes yes extremely poor or bad and it could be extremely, and it could just be poor or bad. Um, basically, we're talking about quality, right? We're talking about low quality. Uh, low quality. <laughs> Leah Huda says, like, stinky. <laughs> sure. There's a, it's common it's just to say it stinks. Right? So, uh, how is your new car? It stinks, right? It's like, it's similar to saying it sucks. And we're not, when we say stinks, we're not talking about a bad smell. Depending on the situation, it's usually, it sucks. It's bad, it's low quality, it's lousy, right? So, lousy, something that's lousy, it sucks. <laughs> it's not something we want, it's like low quality. So, uh, Bill Gates is saying success is a lousy teacher. And that's kind of the opposite of what you think, right? It's like, but I want to win. I want to achieve and that's going to teach me. And I imagine it does. Being successful will teach us, right? Because we should have more money, more uh, opportunity to do things. But along the way, well, let's just keep going with the quotes. We'll use his words, not mine. 
It seduces smart people into thinking they can't lose. Oh, nice. Smart. Right. So let's see. What does seduces mean? Is a ver it's a verb to seduce. What does seduce mean? Hmm. What do... How can we describe to seduce? All right. You could say... Uh, I was seduced by the the low low prices. Something like that. You could also use it for uh, Henry was seduced by Mary. <laughs> All right. Sally Eunice says betray. It could be. It could be. It's it's similar. We're going in the right direction to seduce often is something that's kind of negative and it could lead to betrayal it could lead to someone's betraying you uh-huh leah huda says to attract uh -huh. okay so that's the right idea garden says trick okay it's possible it's possible so if i had to explain it we'll look it up in a moment i would say to seduce is to use your in your powers influence and skills to uh, attract someone to do something. All right, so that's kind of a long way to say it, but you're using your abilities to get someone to do something, all right? Or you're trying to pull them into something, or uh, it could be kind of tricking them. You're kind of not showing them all the information, but you're showing them what they want to see, and you're kind of pulling them in Mm-hmm. Ah, Sally Eunice says entice someone into sexual activity. Yes, that would work down here with Henry and Mary. <laughs> to entice into sexual activity. Yes, so it has different meanings. Well, similar meanings, more specific meanings depending on the context. So let's take a look. Seduce. Let's hear their pronunciation. Seduce. 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 Okay. So right off the bat, <laughs> entice someone into sexual activity. A lawyer had seduced a female client. So maybe the client came to the lawyer saying, can you help me? I have a legal problem. And the lawyer's like, hmm, I will help you if... <laughs> You do something that you probably don't want to do, but you're going to do because you need my help. Right. Okay. So it can also be attract someone to a belief or into a course of action that is inadvisable or foolhardy. All right. So foolhardy just means it's not a good decision. It's kind of stupid. It does. It lacks common sense. It's not a good choice. Inadvisable just means not advisable. As in, don't do it, right? But someone is seducing someone else, getting them to believe something or do something to uh, <clears throat> that's not in their best interest, that they probably shouldn't do. So here we go. We have some nice synonyms. Attract, all right? When I hear attract, it could be good or bad, depending on the situation. Allure, ooh, that sounds a little bit like more spooky. Allure. Lure, aha, uh -huh. lure. And if we look up a lure, like a fishing lure, is just something that you use to catch fish. So you are, you're kind of like seducing, <laughs> you're seducing the fish, right? Or you're trying to, because you cast, I mean, you throw your bait or your lure into the water, and then you start reeling it in, and you want the fish to catch it. So you're kind of seducing the fish because you're giving them a promise of like food, but it's a false promise promise because you're actually going to eat them. So, but seduce, you probably hear more with humans. You won't hear really uh, seducing fish, but it's the same kind of idea. It helps us understand. So this is a fishing lure. You can lure someone into a trap. Maybe that's common to lure into a trap. Let's see what shows up. Lure into a trap. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. So this works. You uh, let me move it over. 
Okay, so we have this big box trap, this trap set up, and there's a bottle of wine or champagne or something in there. And the idea is that the person will take it, and then they pull the string in, or someone else, ooh, they have a string here, and they're waiting for the person to grab it, and then they'll pull it, and the box will ca catch them. So they're using this to seduce the person, or lure, or attract them in to getting caught, right? Okay. All right, so let's go back to the quote. We're going to change, we're going to say the quote, but in different words to kind of give us another option. So success is a lousy teacher. Uh, achieving things, being successful is not a good teacher. It's a poor quality teacher. It seduces smart people. It lures or it kind of tricks smart people into thinking they can't lose. If you always win or if you have success, then your mind suddenly maybe thinks it's too easy. And then when you get to failure, you're like, what? This doesn't make sense. So if you have success all the time, then it makes you think that you can't lose. Interesting. So these are words from Bill Gates and things that people like Bill Gates say, I try to think about because I mean, they have so much experience and they're so successful. They've obviously made very good decisions. So whatever they're saying is uh, probably quite interesting. All right. And here, I don't think he's trying to seduce us and sell a product. He's just telling us what's on his mind. Okay. All right. So this was quote number three. All right. Ooh, time goes fast. Let me take another drink. So let's review what did we do in this lesson. Today we did quotation illumination number three. There's my third finger. And uh, our goal at the beginning was to analyze inspiring quotes from successful people. We did. Check. And we used quote from Coco Chanel, Kelly Coutrone, and Bill Gates. All right. Good motivation today. Right. Right. Good. Lots of stuff to think about. All right, so I'll do my closing and then we're going to look at a picture at the end and you guys will help me describe it. Here we go. So remember, improve your English, become more valuable. It doesn't just have to be English. It can be your computer skills, your reading skills. Ah, I forgot I was going to say something. I heard that Bill Gates said one time, someone asked him, if you could have a superpower, what superpower would you want? And Bill, and Bill Gates' answer was, I wish I could read faster. And I heard, I read that and I was like, wow, very interesting. It's very practical, right? A practical superpower. Imagine if you could read a book like zoop, 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 fast, right? All that information out there that you could just suck into your brain, right? From all of these successful people, just suck it up. Okay. So if you like our stuff here on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and click on the like button. It lets us know and it lets other people know as well if you found value in what I'm presenting. All right. If you're already subscribed, there's a, a bell button. You can click on it and YouTube will let you know when we have new stuff. All right. So let's take a look at the end picture. All right. Okay. So I'm going to wait for you guys to tell me, describe to me what we see in this picture. And then uh, that will be it for tonight, but let's do it. I like this picture. This is somewhere I would like to work. I don't drink coffee, so I probably wouldn't have that there. But uh, to sit there, I would like it. Okay, so you guys tell me. I'm looking at the comments. Describe this picture. What do you see? Or how does it make you feel? What's in the background? What's the location? What's the time of day? A great opportunity to describe, right? put our words into action. All right. All right, I'll wait a, <clears throat> wait a moment, see if anyone's still out there. All right, so I don't see any comments yet, so I will start to describe because my, my time is limited. All right. So I see a very peaceful place with an incredible view, an extraordinary view. 
right? So in the background, we'll start with the background and then we'll move to the foreground. The foreground is just the part up front that's close to you. Background is what's far away. All right. So in the background, there are mountains and there's like a lake, maybe a mountaintop lake. There's a lot of stuff, right? Maybe it's the sea. Sally Eunice says sea. That's possible. Maybe a mountain lake, maybe a, a sea somewhere in the world. And it's just an incredible view. It's probably, I don't know, midday. That's what I'm going to guess. It's probably cold outside. It makes me think it's cold outside. But I don't know. We can't really see. It's a little bit blurry. Big window, but it's a little bit blurry. Let's see. Sally Eunice says coffee. Yes, we have a cup of coffee in a saucer. All right? If we say in a saucer, we'll say cup and saucer. So a saucer is just the, the little plate that goes with the cup. Let's put saucer. All right? So this is a saucer. You put the cup on top. All right? So it's just a little plate. And maybe there's a spoon too. I'm not quite sure. It's behind my head. All right? We have the laptop. Garden says it's a dreamy workplace. Yes. Leah Huda says it reminds me of myself when I drink my cappuccino. Great. Great. So we have the laptop, it's open. We don't know if it doesn't look like it's turned on because the screen is blank. We can see the keyboard, there's the mouse pad. And I'm not quite sure what brand of laptop it is. Maybe a Dell, maybe an Acer, an Asus, Asus, however they say it. And it's just a very nice view. I would love to work here. I can work a lot on my laptop and you could, in this location you look up, take a, a break. Maybe take a sip of your coffee, go walk by the window for a moment. Oh, it's such a nice view. And then you go back to work, right? Sounds good. Okay, so I'm out of here because time is up for me. So I'm going to put a thank you in the comments because I had a very nice time with you guys. I like talking about quotes and motivation, motivational stuff because for me, it's very, I feel like it's very practical stuff helps me th see things clearer and evaluate and make decisions in my own life that I think are of higher quality. All right, so I'm going to say thanks, everyone. I had a wonderful time. See you soon. Okay, there's my ending comment. Thanks, everyone. I had a wonderful time. See you soon. Okay, so wherever you are in the world, Good morning, good night, good afternoon, good evening, good midnight, everything in between. Okay, so I'm out of here. Take care. Am I still alive? I guess I'm still alive.